Hey there viewers and we are on part four of the weekly project and we are going to be doing a mobile design or mobile responsive design for the landing page validated ideas. So let's get into the challenge. And before we get into the challenge, if you do find the content useful, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. My name is Roy, I'm a web designer. I do highly encourage you to practice. I've left a small challenge in the description. Please do check it out and give me feedback and let's get into the video. Okay, so we're not messing around today. We're gonna speed it all the way. And what I'm doing now, I'm just going onto the landing page and I'm gonna create a canvas or frame uh, of iPhone X, I believe, which is 375 by 812 pixels. And uh, I mean, immediately I give it a light gray color and a border radius of 40 pixels. So straight away, you've got the, that nice silhouette shape of a phone. I'm just, again, reminding myself of the real app uh, so now I'm just grabbing the nav that I created and um, I'm just grabbing some of the stuff that I created already and the main difference when it goes to mobile is to just reduce the font size so you still want to try and keep it a minimum of 16 pixels if you can for body text but the headings just reduce the font size uh, you can play around with the size and what I'm doing here I'm trying to reduce the width of the form um, so again it's just a learning process uh, when it comes to auto layout um, but I th again once you've got this figured out exactly as they have it there you'll be able to just create so many more components um, so here again because it's on a smaller screen I'm reducing the height of the the input field uh, and as well as the font size. So I'm just thinking, shall I stack the button? Um, shall I put the button below the input field? So I'm just testing this out and seeing how it looks when it will fill the container. And as you can see there, it seems to be okay. The only thing is the button, the text is in the middle and the input field placeholder is on the left aligning to the left so maybe that don't look right so i center aligned it but normally you don't see it center aligned so i made the, the heading a bit bigger and you can see the heading stands out which again is what you want as users nowadays they just scan um, they don't have time to read long text so let's try and keep it short and snappy again i'm just trying to place the elements nicely i'm playing around with the color of the avatar um, just trying to give it a bit of a strong color so that your eyes may look at that because you're you're going from left to right top to bottom um, and also the button subscribe has a good contrast or one of the one of the highest contrast so now i'm deciding okay i want to have it um, floating to the left of the input field so now the challenge is I just have to make sure that it um, hugs the contents um, so that that means it will fill the width of the the actual text which is interesting and then I eventually left the line the the type email field uh, and again here I'm just reducing some of the padding uh, and I think there I filled the container so that's what you're meant to do fill the container and then now you can see it's fitting within that width and I'm making a font size smaller to 16 now instead of 18 uh, so little things like that when you go to mobile responsive you just want to reduce your font sizes and normally to keep it really simple it just stacks and what I've done there I, I give the background of white and then um, the frame is in a really light grey so it helps the mobile design um, appear above now I'm playing around with the, the branding and this is a little challenge that I left for you in the description if you want to practice on something very simple to start with and I highly encourage you to do this if you have a business or your own name for example check out the challenge let me know any feedback just just let me know and um, yeah I think this is just a nice little way to practice as opposed to doing a whole mobile design. And what I've done there, I've done a, a dark version just to see how it looks. And it's so quick and easy just to 
try it out no harm in trying there's a whole load of different things you have to do when it's dark mode it's not just as simple as switching colors but I just had to go and see how it looked now what I'm doing I'm putting in the report with all the ticks because that's also quite important of all the benefits uh, so here I'm just deciding should I place this below the testimonial and again I'm reducing the size of the circles just so that it will fit uh, and they don't need to be so big and again I'm reducing the font size of the uh, the list items so it all fits very nicely uh, and then what I'm doing I make sure that I have a padding on the left and the right of 32 pixels so again that goes along the lines of the eight point grid and then I'm deciding ah oh, maybe I'll put a testimonial on the footer see how that looks and that, that actually looks okay um, the only issue with that is if you start building it there's there's there'll be issues with order <laughs> in flexbox um, so that might not be that simple to do when you build it uh, anyway I'm just having a gaze at the uh, the blog and looking at different things and getting into content so now it's just a matter of uh, reducing the width uh, and you can see there it's, it's a bit of a challenge but again I think once you just start playing around with auto layout you, you're just gonna get familiar with it again it's just practice you know practice makes perfect as they say everyone knows that saying um, and this is what the real world is when it comes to web if you ever get when you get into design it's just the nitty-gritty practicing the same old thing every day um, but then it becomes muscle memory and you'll get you'll get the hang of it uh, so again here I'm just trying to fill container so that it doesn't cut off uh, and now it's starting to come together now uh, yeah it's starting to fill the container I'm trying lots of different options and that's really what it is you know you just you're just trying so many different things if you time box your practice to one hour for example then you're kind of forced to just try it out sometimes you don't want to be too much of a, uh, of a perfectionist because you know I, I've had that issue before where you just don't try things enough or you you, you just I don't know you just don't uh, you just don't do it you just don't produce enough when you're too perfect too much of a perfectionist so I think it's way better just to practice push out stuff get stuff out it's not perfect but then you get feedback and then you you go back to the drawing board and you improve it a lot of startups some of the startups do work that way uh, they're not going to hit the ground running perfectly they're not going to figure out the problem perfectly they're going to put it out there they're going to get real feedback and they're going to keep refining and refining and when they do hit something well then they're going to double down and they're just going to go for it from there um, so in this case it applies to design as well you just got to keep at it really um, and here I'm just putting in more blog posts and seeing how that looks so yeah we're at the end of the episode um, and yeah again if you do find the content useful leave a like leave a comment subscribe hit the bell and thanks again for all those that are commenting and, and giving some feedback on what they would like to see in future posts there seemed to be quite a positive response to doing this weekly project where you're going from logo to landing to mobile design and then a design system which is tomorrow um, and yeah it seems pretty good so I hope you enjoyed it the weekend is coming uh, I hope you enjoy your weekend and yeah have a good morning afternoon and evening take care bye <laughs>